With the NHL season just eight days away, of course, there's still some players looking for jobs. And I'm going to ask these two fine gentlemen of which player they would like to sign if they were an NHL owner, GM, coach, you name it. So the four guys that I picked out of here, you have Marty Brodeur, Danny Alfredson, Dustin Penner, Ray Whitney. Out of those four guys who are unrestricted free agents, which one would you sign to make a bigger impact for your club? Depends what your team is and what your needs are, I yep. guess. But, but out of those four names, who would actually serve as a bigger, if, would have if, a bigger impact? If you have... If you need a goaltender with some experience, maybe you have a young starter, you don't have much of a backup, I'd give Marty a chance. I think he's a, if he's willing to take on a backup role, I mean, the guy has more experience than any other goalie. He's a leader. He's won. And that's the great thing about goalies. It doesn't matter what level of hockey you're talking. If, if a goalie is 18 years old and he's playing in the NHL and he's standing on his head, you're going to go with him. So you're going to go with whoever can stop you the puck in a given night and Marty has stopped a lot of pucks in his time. So Marty's probably at the top of the list, and next for me, if he's healthy, is Danny. Uh, Danny Alfredson, heck of a two-way player, and he's a good leader on your team. If he's healthy, he's good. Penner, I've never liked. Um, <laughs> Penner. Yeah, yeah. But and he's won cups, he's had the experience. And so is Marty. And Ray Whitney, well and Ray Whitney's situations. a fantastic player with the puck. He's great on the power play. He's horrible five on five. I'm sorry, but he is. You know what? I just don't want to see Marty or Alfredson not go out on their own terms. Like, I would hate to see those guys want to play and not get a chance somewhere. I'm thinking like, Marty Brodeur really should go play, to Winnipeg because they have a guy who they're not quite sure on just yet in Andre Pavlik, who's had games where he looks brilliant and then had those games where he's done a complete 180. So is, yeah. have a Brodeur. I, I, wouldn't nice, wish, right? I wouldn't wish anybody uh, to go to Winnipeg. Is, uh, but, <laughs> you know, Martin Brodeur oh, to go on. to Winnipeg. Is Al, Al, Al Montoya still their backup? Do they still I have Al Montoya? No, Montoya's out of there. No. Is he? No, yeah. He went to Phoenix, did he? Yeah, yeah, he went to Phoenix. Who's their backup? P who knows? Well, there you go, guys. See, uh, I, I maybe it's, should it's, follow him a little more, but but I'd you're give saying Marty I a think chance. give the him guy's even a backup, he's still serving. If he takes him, like, does he need big money? Is that what he's worried about? He shouldn't be. I think he just wants to play. If he just wants to play, sign him. How about this? What happens if I told you guys they should bench Tom Brady, and I mean the New England Patriots? He looks horrible. Granted, he doesn't necessarily have the same weapons as he did, but you know what? I think yesterday's game, the Monday night game against the Kansas City Chiefs, was a prime example of why. I think his skill sets are deteriorating a little bit. Do you mm. guys agree with what I'm saying? No. And do you think that maybe we're at the end of an era for the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick? I Belichar? think the New England Patriots are coming to an end of an era, like all franchises do. Yeah, they you go know? through their cycles. I, I think he is missing so many weapons and missing such an offensive line. Like I was watching last night and they said he's been through so many offensive linemen where guys are switching around and nobody's comfortable in their positions. You can't blame just the quarterback. I mean, you give him a Wes Welker that he, he but, had a few years well, but, ago. But wouldn't you start, if you're the Patriots, who they evaluate everybody on that team from 1 to 52, even their head, you know, even the coaches, even the, even the ball boy. That's what they do. That's the New England way. It's Don't Bill you Belichick think it's, way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Don't yeah. you think it's time to maybe they have to reevaluate the quarterback situation? You know what? And I, I watched the post-game conference on Boston TV last night with Bill Belichick, and he's the worst interview around, by the way. But uh, regardless of that, he knows he has to start from ground zero right now. And, and they're almost to a point in that organization, that tells you something when you listen to the post-game interview, that he knows they're right near the bottom of where they want to be. And so they have the long way to go to get better. They're done. They're, and, it's and, not Brady's fault. And, and you read into those statements that the head coach is making that this is an overhaul. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to say Brady's done. You still need a leader at quarterback. Quarterback's a big position for you in football, and I don't think you're going to give up on Brady. But they've been doing it with smoke and mirrors for the no last number of years. How about He's a this winner. guy? Yeah. How about this guy, Alex Smith, on the opposite end, Kansas City? Not a bad job last night. Didn't hurt that you had Jamal Charles back in the lineup and Dwayne Bow. But you look at him, most underrated quarterback in the NFL. He's one of the best managers of the game. He manages the game well. You know, he's not a flashy quarterback. He does the small things right. He manages the game really well. I don't, he's not an elite quarterback. You know, there's a few elite quarterbacks. I think you can still put Peyton Manning yeah, up there. Yeah. You know, Aaron Rodgers, how good did he look on Sunday? I'm not sure if Tom Brady's still an elite quarterback. He's not in their top, up. yeah, he wouldn't be in the top five. When you look at quarterbacks in the NFL, even top 10 is kind of stretching it. Well, uh, but, but for what he has in Kansas City, I think he utilizes his weapons in Kansas City the best he can. 
Okay, how about this, guys? Uh, baseball playoffs start today, and we'll begin with the AL wild card. One game playoff, Oakland, Kansas City. You have John Lester taking on James Shields. Who do you guys have? Oh, I get Lester every day. Like, you know, if you want to win one game, Johnny Lester is the guy to put on the Even though he struggled the second half of the year. Yeah, I, I, I think he's just a, he's a big game kind of guy. This and is going to be a fun game. Kansas City is going to win this game, I think. Yeah. They've got a good, good – James Shields is a good pitcher. You're yeah. at home. They haven't had a moment like this for years. Can you imagine the atmosphere there? They're probably still partying from across the street last night, the big Chiefs win. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Yeah. They share a parking lot. Yeah. The Royals and the Chiefs. I thought that was the coolest thing. But I think the momentum they brought into the playoffs, the hottest, one of the hottest teams in baseball, Oakland struggled down the stretch. I'm rooting for the Royals. Okay, what about this? National League, who do you have in the game tomorrow? The San Francisco Giants or those pesky Pittsburgh Pirates? You know what? It's in San Fran. Um... The Giants still have a lot of guys that are around that have won before, and that goes a long way in the playoffs. So I, I'm picking the Giants to win that one, although it, it's anybody's game, but I think at the end, the result is going to be guys that have won before or win again. My heart's telling me I want the Pirates to win. I would love to see the Pirates win, but I don't think they will. Okay, guys, how about this? Were you impressed by the way Steve Smith played against his former team, of course, released earlier in the year. Said he didn't want to play for anybody else, but they were bagged and pleated. They, referring to the Baltimore Ravens, and it paid dividends. They're first in their division. Not to mention, Steve Smith, seven catches, 139 yards, two touchdowns against the Carolina Panthers. Are you impressed, considering he's 36? How can, how can you not pace. be impressed? Yeah. And, what's, and what's scary? He's on pace to break, have a career year. You on pace what? to have a career year. You could give the top receiver in the league. I don't care who it is. If anybody puts up 130 some yards, I'm impressed. Yeah, I think more than anything with him, his old club said, "You know what? You're too old to play the game," and, and maybe that it has inspired him, and he's found a different, you know, different life, different career in, in Baltimore to show that, you know what? I'm going to show those guys every day I go on the field. I'm going to show those guys that I still can play the game, and he showed it on Sunday. What was his quote? He said, oh. "I made them look like." I can't remember, but it was one of the funniest quotes I've yeah. read. I don't know how I can't remember right now, but he was really trashing him after the game. He did and mention there's going to be a lot of blood and guts, too, out there, and he came up with a couple of goggles before, yeah. uh, during the, uh, what was it, pregame, but the days prior to the game. So, uh, you know what? He had the last laugh. He's proving that he's going to have a great year and has been valuable for a Baltimore team that has really needed some positive news considering what's transpired for them uh, over the summer and, of course, the first part of the season. We're going to take another quick commercial break. When we return, we're going to have Over Under next.